This over here is an RTX 5090 Founders Edition. And we're gonna be testing something very special because this GPU can do something that no other GPU, no other hardware has been able to do on planet Earth. In terms of video editing, it's got some very special decoders and I've got a pre-release DaVinci Resolve software here. Let's check out what it can do actually in video editing. This part of the video is brought to you by Asus ProArt PX13, the ultimate two-in-one creator laptop with AMD Ryzen 9 AI CPU and NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU. The PX13 is one of the most compact and powerful 13-inch laptops out there. Create smarter and faster from anywhere with AI features and military-grade toughness. Go check out our full overview in the video description below. Okay, by the way, this video has got 14.1 thousand views. Let's see what the views are like by the end of the video. Right now, 14.1. If you enjoy videos like these, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. One more thing before starting is Premiere Pro. I'm usually doing these tests in Premiere Pro because I think Premiere Pro is a little bit of a better program to showcase really the performance of a GPU or of a system just because of the way the timeline and how it's set up. DaVinci Resolve is more efficient, but not as real or not as actual performance because it's making it smaller and often you're getting not the real performance of the codec playback if you know what I mean. Because this RTX 5090 has some very special decoders and it can finally support really really interesting codec playback. For example H.264 10-bit 422. This has always been CPU accelerated Jeep like codec and now apparently you can do it in there. Also H.265 422 10 bit never been able to do on a GPU but let's take a look now. By the way if I'm going to task manager the interesting thing is you can actually see all of these decoders. I've got decoder one and two open here so we can see which one it actually uses and if I go down the menu here you can see encoder one two three. So there's three encoders two decoders. Fantastic. So then let's start doing this. I've got a little bit of a color correction of color grade on as well. It's really nothing like to show off my color grading skills. This is just to really put some weight on the GPU. And if you look at the actual color grading tab, what's going on, there is curves, lot one, lot two, and noise reduction going on. Noise reduction often is very, very heavy on DaVinci Resolve and takes a lot of resources. So we'll see how much this GPU plays this back. So what you can see on the right side in here is the actual GPU temperatures, how much watts it pulls, the GPU fans, what's going on with the GPU, the memory junction temperature, as well as memory available and memory used or allocated as you can see in there. And then on the bottom here we can see if our GPU is being used, if our memory is being used, if our CPU is being used. Firstly, I'm running a 12900K platform and I'm using DDR4. I'm using the Asus Strix Z690A motherboard, which is probably one of the best DDR4 motherboard for the Intel's 12, 13, 14th gen. So we're creating a little bit of a CPU bottleneck there as well. It's not the best CPU out there. I'm using 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RGB 3600 megahertz DDR4. I'm using Arctic Liquid Freezer three as you can see in here in an odd position we're using samsung 980 pro one terabyte for the main os operating system and we've got a 1200 watt be quiet power supply if you want to check them out the links are in the description below so let's start we're going to start with 30 frames per second so this is 4k 30 frames per second 4 to 2 10 bit so straight away as you can see gpu is doing something here is this a 264 or as you can see CPU is doing something there decoders I can't see any of the decoders playing anything back so if I'm scrubbing through it's very very smooth in terms in terms of 30 frames per second I'll just take the color grade off for a second and then press play look maybe the decoders are doing such little job can you see a little peek in there the CPU is kind of doing something but I don't quite know if this is going back to GPU or CPU. So this is H.264, another H.264, 25 frames per second, 422. What I'm seeing is very instant playback when pressing play. Scrubbing very, very good as well. And as you can see here now, with 25 frames per second, it is playing it back. But interestingly, 30 frames per second, it somehow wants to put it on a CPU. 
and I don't know why. Bear in mind, I've got the iGPU turned off on the CPU to actually just force any type of codec that's hardware accelerated onto the GPU. Interestingly, look, 30 frames per second, nothing. And now when I switch over to 25, you can see how the decoders, both of them are working. Why? I don't really know. And this is SI, so that will be most likely on the CPU. To so play in back, as you can see, it will be on the CPU because it is interframe, which means it's not long GOP, it's interframe codec, which means every single frame is played like separately. Whereas H.264 and 5, the previous ones, uh, they are long GOP, which means long group of pictures. So in order, the, the way the compression works is it looks like a long group of um, photos or frames and then it reduces the quality on some of them so if you wants to figure out like one frame it has to look at like a group of photos around the actual frame to figure out what that frame is if that makes sense but that way it keeps the data lower and still the same quality but it's very very hard to play back that's why you have hardware acceleration for these uh, types of codecs so let's move on to 60 frames per second so just adding a few more frames so this is 4208 bit super smooth and as you can see we're playing it back on the decoders on the gpu no problem playing back it's instant and this is 4 to 2 10 bit and h264 i believe this is yep and let's take a look yep this is amazing oh wow this was never possible look the cpu is basically doing nothing Oh my goodness, this is going to be such a massive acceleration for some of these codecs that we're doing. Because we're shooting H.264 10-bit 422 on there. But now we can get hardware acceleration on a timeline like that. But wait a second, 30 frames wasn't. It looks very, very smooth. 422, H.264. Let's see if it swaps over to H.265. Oh, sorry to the decoders when it goes to his 25 frames per second. Yeah, it does. Oh, but look, it's playing it back so low. Maybe because, are they used anything at all? No, it's 0% used, both of them. So why is 30 frames per second not accelerated on the GPU? 25 frames is and 60 frames is, but not 30. What's going on? Now let's take a look at Canon C200 footage. So scrubbing through is very, very easy. This is Canon RAW DCI 4K. Okay, it looks like it might be struggling. I oh, know, maybe it was just, it is struggling a little bit. But I think it's because of the CPU. As you can see, the decoder is not doing much in here. It's using some other parts of the GPU to play this back. This codec here has previously only been supported on Intel iGPU or dedicated GPU, Intel media engines. This is H.265 10-bit 422. Let's take a look at that. If I press play and on these decoders, you see a blue mountain rising, it's flipping good news. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. So effortlessly. There it is. Look at that. Oh, scrubbing is buttery smooth. Like, oh my goodness. This is going to change the game big time. Now you don't need Intel CPU. Just have AMD CPU and you're going to have insane playback. Look at this. This is unbelievable. 24 frames. Yeah, 24 frames is about 5% use there. And when scrubbing through, it goes about 20-30%. Okay, red raw. I don't think it's going to do decoding there, but it's super buttery smooth. It just feels extremely light. It's a little bit more on the CPU, but GPU is doing some of the rendering. 5K red raw. A little bit more choppy. Yep, 
Yeah, look at that. The CPU is struggling with this a bit. 6KB raw. Oh my goodness. It's like, it's like nothing. It's like a hot knife through butter. CPU accelerated, GPU is doing some of it, but it's not accelerated by the decoders. 6K B-RAW. It's also CPU bottlenecked, not GPU. Not directly played back on the GPU. Canon R5 8K. looks buttery buttery smooth bear in mind i've got a full noise reduction two lots on and it breezes through like absolutely no problem 8k footage unbelievable 8k red raw scrubbing is kind of choppy but it's because of the cpu not gpu when we press play look our cpu goes 100 frames per second so that looks um, pretty interesting. So I've also got this final render here now, and this is where both of the clips and everything that you just saw are on the timeline. This first blue part is where there's color grade on, and then the yellow part is where there's no color grade on. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go and export this. to 4K, H264, MP4, okay, and I'm gonna go to add to render queue. So I'm gonna press render all, and then get this up, and actually see what happens. I'm gonna put the encoder one, get encoder two, and encoder three up, so we can see all of these three in action. Wow, 400 watts while exporting, Yankee Doodles. And right now about 14 gigabytes of the 32 used. Max it's put out is 17.5 gigabytes. Now look at that, the GPU is 100% utilized. It's pretty much doing any, everything. The CPU is kind of just chucking around with 10 to 20% usage. RAM obviously a little bit used as well but 99% of the stuff is getting done on the, the GPU, which is putting all of these rasterization effects and trying to calculate all the noise reduction out while decor encoding with three of the encoders. Okay, 14.1, okay. Let me refresh it, it was 15 minutes ago. 19.8, that's 144. Oh my goodness, TikTok's going crazy. Okay, see, these are different codecs. Now CPU is used because it's red codec. The encoders are still putting some of the video together, but it's not doing as much work as previously, even though it's still pulling like 424 watts. The encoders are so powerful. It's using three of them to encode 8K video, and they're only 4% utilized, all of them. That's insane. Okay, now what's happening is this is, oh my goodness, how fast is this? Look how much the encoders are doing now work. So this is without the color grade. And when there's no color grade, look at the export speed now. It's going so much faster than even playing back in real time. So right now we've been using 16, almost 16 gigabytes of RAM. There's about the same amount left to go. This is CPU 100%, but still look at that. The encoding is a lot more utilized with red footage when there's no color grading on than when it was before. Oh, it had crashed earlier actually. As you can see, on without the color grade, it is using less GPU power. So it's done now. Certain things to note here. Maximum power draw was 432 watts, which is not that much higher than the 4090. You know, still higher. 4090 would have been like less than 400. But the idle wattage is about 21, 25, 30 watts, something like that. It has gone down to 28.3 watts on the minimum, but that's about it. In terms of temperature, 64 degrees. What did we see here? We saw some encoding and so on in there. Oh my goodness. It did it in nine minutes and six seconds. This is a 20 minute timeline. It's got all sorts of codecs in there, red, 8k up to 12k footage it just does it oh we haven't done the b raw 12k scrubbing fine pressing play again 
it can do it, no problem. Just pulls 200 watts from the GPU. Now in conclusion, this is an absolute game changer, the 50 series. The good news, another one of those, is that these encoders are the same on even the lower tier, but you don't have as many. So you will still have on the 5070, for example, the same codec support that you saw now, H.264 and H.265 10-bit 422, 422 timeline. It's absolutely incredible. This was not possible before. That's gonna accelerate you a lot. It's absolutely insane. Am I excited about some other things? Absolutely. I think this is an absolutely insane buy, insane GPU and a beautiful design. If you want to know how good this is in other applications, go check out my review on the channel. Thanks guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll always get back to my minute messages if you need to reach out in 24 hours. Check out the best bang for buck build guides in the video description below, which very soon will be updated. Maybe by the time you're watching this and um, I'll see you soon. Okay, bye bye.